Hey guys, <clears throat> what's going on? Welcome back to the another episode of the Funded Series. What's going on, guys? Um, let me know if uh, my audio is good. Send me one in the chat. <clears throat> so yeah, I, uh, I spent the weekend with the Camp High Pandas. It was awesome. Uh, I went to the Karate Combat event and went to a little block party there. So it was. Uh, I got to run into Trader Main. It was pretty awesome. <clears throat> Makes me want to move down there. Oh, you guys miss me. I miss you guys too. <clears throat> so uh, I guess let's just kind of get into it. So I was looking uh, last week. I was looking for further expansion on the upside, right? We were looking for this uh, sell side inefficiency to be tapped into, right? And we kind of had that. So again, I measured this range from this high to this low, right? Uh, and you know, we've had, we've already had that stop run there. It was kind of shallow. Uh, and we've, you know, tried multiple attempts to try and get in there, uh, lower, but, uh, once this candle occurred this week, right? So last week I was looking for a further upside to, uh, to at least test 50% of this range. So, um, I'm, I'm still thinking that we're going to trade up towards one of fours, uh, because we still have this. Sell side imbalance that hasn't been filled in yet, and it is above the 61% uh, OTE. All right, so let's dive into, I guess, the dollar. Um, I mean, the dollar, these moves are really clean, right? So you really want to try and get in the, in the market, though, once it's uh, filling in some of this imbalance. All right, so you want to try and position yourself here. Uh, because this has the best risk reward ratio. Like if you're getting in up here or even on this candle, right, your downside risk is uh, your stop has to be wider. All right, so we kind of tapped into this uh, mitigation block. Take the highest candle close, close to that, um, this wick. Uh, and then this is a breaker, right? So we have this breaker. <clears throat> then we have this buy sign imbalance. And then we've rallied into this weekly fair value gap. So what do I think is going to go next? All right, we have another uh, volume imbalance in here. And I find this interesting because of the recent price action this year. Uh, there's been a lot of volume imbalances. <clears throat> also, guys, uh, am I red today? Do I look red? I think I changed my camera filter. People are roasting me. <clears throat> so I think I think we may have seen the low of the week today. Um, but we'll have to see. There's so much news on the calendar. I really am probably not gonna trade a whole lot. Like if I if I am gonna take any position, it's probably gonna be half risk or something like that. So um I think as long as right, so today's Tuesday, there's a bunch of news out overnight um, from the London session going into New York. So if we don't lose this low, right, and let's say we put it in a swing a swing point right here, so we'll have this low, a lower low, and then a higher low, right? So we'll have a three-bar swing pattern. Maybe we'll push up higher, right? We have this uh, daily fair value gap in here. I don't know what color to make this. <clears throat> So this is the weekly fair value gap. This is the daily fair value gap. So if we can get up over this, we're probably going to trade up into the 104s. But again, the market, uh, we have a lot of news out this week. So just be careful if you are going to trade. Uh, I personally probably not going to trade. And if anything, it's probably going to be half risk. So with that being said, let's hop over into the Aussie. And I'll show you guys um, two of the trades that I took. Here, give me one second. I'm going to share my screen. I'm going to get to turn this off just so you guys don't see my login information. I hope everybody had a great weekend. <clears throat> So I'm going to just go to the four hour and show you guys 
the trades that I took on the Aussie that helped me pass the challenge. So uh, last week, I only took two, two, two trades. So I tried to short it here. Uh, this was this four-hour fair value gap on the Aussie, right? And I was expecting it to just roll over based on this candle. Like, I didn't want to see the high broken. Uh, I got stopped out for a small loss. And then I re-entered um, when I saw that, you know, that that four-hour fair value gap was being respected. And I got out towards the low. So, right, time of day, day of week, Thursday, when Thursday rolls around and it's already pushing one side of the range, I'm typically out, right? Because Thursdays can create, I almost say this every single week because it's like almost amazing how it always pans out. Maybe not always, but 90, 80 to 90% of the time, this will pan out where you're going to get the Thursday low of the week and then you're going to have a retracement back into the range, right? And that's basically what we had. So if I were to hold on to this trade, right? And let's say I was up, uh, I believe I was up a little bit over 2R. Uh, this is my stop, 20 pips. Yes, yeah, so I was a little bit up over 2R, right? And I just collapsed the full position. So I actually scaled in. So I shorted here, all right? And uh, based on our, based on the last episode, if you guys go back and watch it, like I, I, I talked about how I pyramided the trades. This is exactly what I did. So I shorted on this for our fair value gap, right? When it broke down. I move my stop to break even, and then I entered another position on this four-hour candle, right? And I held it down into this low, right? So if I did not uh, discretionarily just exit my trade, I would that would have been either a breakout, uh, break even, or a loss, <clears throat> right? So I shorted here, and I shorted again here. So this was, I believe, after the news came out. On, uh, maybe I, I believe it was after the news came out on Thursday. I'm not sure. I can't remember now. Let's see. Uh, yeah. So the 8:30 news came out, and then when we got when I got a little bit of a break in market structure, I just shorted it. Um, and then I covered towards the end of uh, the London session, or sorry, the end of yeah, sorry, the end of uh, London session. So. To, leading up to London close. All right, so when London close happens, right, that low is already in for the day, or for the week, actually. All right, and then it's just traded all the way back up. So I'm very discretionary in my exits. Uh, what prop firms am I using? I'm pretty much using almost all of them. So I'm funded at uh, my Forex funds, uh, True Forex funds, FTMO, The Funded Trader, uh, what else? I think, am I missing any? Anyways, it's like it's it's like pretty much all the firms. I'm using like almost every single firm that's available to me. Um, <laughs> a funded engineer is like the one firm that I'm not funded with yet, and that's kind of what I'm showing you guys right now. Is these are the challenges that I'm taking. So let's hop over to the dashboards. All right, so this was the hundred thousand dollar account that I had paid for. Uh, don't look at this uh, for for whatever reason. When I paid for the account, I wanted to get the two the two step account, uh, but I accidentally paid for the one step. But I talked to Tristan and he actually edited it for me. So this max daily loss was actually five thousand dollars, and the max loss was actually ten thousand, I believe. Um, so I only needed to make nine percent. So this is why, right? I have uh, ninety four hundred dollars, and this is passed. All right. Uh, so yeah, don't, I wouldn't look at this max daily loss. This is not, that's not correct. Um, well, so it is, I mean, it, this is, is this correct? I don't think I lost two, two point eight percent in one day. It seems high. I'm not sure. Maybe I did lose two point eight percent in one day. <laughs> All right. But uh, it's, it's kind of just like, a, it was like a slow steady grind. So I actually started this, started trading this on Tuesday, uh, May 2nd and I passed it the 18th. So about, about two weeks. Um, this next one, pretty much, pretty much the same. Uh, it's a, just a 200, $200,000 account. It's pretty much the same trades that I was taking. Right, you kind of see that these are just doubles. 
uh, what I what I did on the other one. <clears throat> so this phase one's passed as well. Um, I kind of got into like a bit of a drawdown period from when I was up, uh, and then I had to call my wall all the way all of it all the way back up. I'm not sure if this is a running PL or if this is closed. Uh, what that base what that's based on, and then I have my last one that is up four percent. So I need to make another five percent on this one. So um, I think probably within the next month or two, I should be fully funded at the funded engineer and we'll see. So how do I deal with these market conditions? Are you moving to break even quicker or taking profits earlier? So I am, I mean, it's hard to say because I, I honestly, I moved to break even pretty quickly just because I'm like more of an intraday, intraweek trader. But I moved to break even probably around like, one R, one R, two R. I'm usually moving to break even. Um, but so the thing is, uh, it's it's more difficult right now because I'm not getting huge runners. Like, you know, there's market conditions where you could run your trade for hundreds of pips, but we're not in that type of environment right now. Am I? I am definitely a U.S. citizen. I'm in New York. <clears throat> so let me. Uh, I'm just gonna pull up the chat overlay. Let me know if you guys got any questions. I don't really have anything else to cover. I mean, I kind of just showed you, um, you know, my funded accounts. So I'm going to look into also adding crypto fund trader. Uh, so I, I'm planning on getting into crypto and, and swing trading crypto a bit. So it's mostly going to be Bitcoin, uh, unless you guys have other assets you want me to take a look at. But uh, they should be, this this firm should be launching their MetaTrader platform pretty soon uh, so this is interesting they actually have uh four percent four percent phase two which is kind of interesting <clears throat> uh dktv asks what is the best problem with no time limit do you think so in my opinion i mean I can only speak towards uh, my funded FX because they have no time limit. Um, I haven't tried Bespoke. Bespoke is another one that I want to try out and the funded engineer, but I'm not funded with them. I mean, I'm not, I haven't received a payout from these newer firms like uh, the funded engineer or Bespoke, um, but I have received like almost a little bit over 20 K from my funded FX. So, so far, no issues. Um, they've been, uh, they've been pretty good. It's hard for me to say if I'm bearish on spoos, Hannah. Like I, I haven't been trading the indices much, um, and they're honestly moving. They're not moving in correlation with the dollar. Like the dollar is going up, and typically risk off, risk assets go down. You know, risk assets are bearish when the dollar is going up, but indices are going up as well. Um, it kind of has like a positive drift thing going on uh, because people are just dumping their retirement money into it, right? Also, guys, if you if you um, you know if you want to support the channel, if you find value in what I'm doing, uh, like doing these funded challenges and stuff, uh, use the code J to check out for the funded trader. I'm affiliated with them. I think they're one of the top leading prop firms out there. So, uh, if you want to support this channel, you want to support me, then use the code. So, uh, Crankster, I'm I'm gonna look at your question right now, bro. <laughs> <clears throat> is that a super hot fire in your profile picture, bro? <laughs> what are your risks per time frame? Is, is that per time frame? Me, I personally use 1% on anything higher than 15 minutes. Yo, so honestly, that's, that's, it's not a bad thing. It's not a bad idea to do that because a lot of times, like the higher time frame trades pan out a lot better than just, uh, trying to scalp the lower time frames because I know people like they'll size up on a daily setup, but that's because you're only getting like two or three trades a month, right? So if you're doing like one to two, if you're doing like one to three trades per month and you're doing one percent, like that's fine. I think if you increase your frequency, you actually want to reduce your risk. <clears throat> so my ideal risk per trade when doing the eval eval accounts. I'm typically doing like 1% on both phases. 
So I'll typically do 1% on phase one and two. Um, but I, I'm very aware of like my edge and like how, how many trades I need to win over like a series of 10 or 20 trades. Cause you know, with a 30 day challenge, you really only get 20 trading days. They're not, you're not getting like a full 30 trading days. Um, unless you, you find firms that allow you to trade crypto on the weekend. Like FTMO allows you to trade crypto on the weekend, which can be an advan- advantage because you get, you know, 10 extra trading days a month. <clears throat> yeah, and a lot of news. Yeah, sleep in, bro. I'm trying to sleep in too. Yo, Taylor, what's up? What's up, dog? <laughs> yeah, Bitcoin and F. Yeah, yeah. So, like, if I'm going to do that uh, crypto fund, I'm just going to trade Bitcoin and ETH. I don't have time to, like, look at all the altcoins and stuff. It's, it's too much. <clears throat> Trading setup of the video. Um, I, yeah, I mean, I can go over my like trade setups just briefly. Like, honestly, if you if you were to look at the majority of my trades, right, I'm just shorting inside of a fair value. I'm going long. I'm going long or short inside fair value gaps, right? So, if we have this four hour fair value gap in here, right, I'm usually just shorting it when it's trading inside of here. So, like, I'm gonna turn off this replay and I'll, maybe I'll hide some of the candles and stuff. But this is typically what the market looks like when I'm shorting it. All right. Like it typically looks like this. I'm going short and I'm placing my stop right like above this high, which is exactly what I did. And if I'm going long, right, I'm going long at a uh, imbalance or fair value gap. All right. So if the market's like this, right, if this stabs down this nice long wick into this order block, like I'm going to go, I'm going to buy it and put my stop somewhere reasonable down here. Uh, Same thing here, right? We have this purge right here. Uh, I shorted this as soon as we purge the high. So literally I'm just trading fair value gaps. I'm not doing anything crazy. So my setup is really every single week, I'm just waiting on uh, the perfect time, the perfect day to go short or long and try and find an imbalance to use uh, to go short. Right. So again, if I skip forward, I got stopped out on this trade. All right. I'm still going to take that setup nine times out of 10. Can I get out of this stupid exit tool, man? I'll exit this. Here we go. <clears throat> um, yeah. Nine times out of 10, I'm taking the same trade. Like I took it here. Right. And then when it rolled over again, right, I'm waiting, I'm waiting. And then I shorted again here. And then added into it once it starts moving my direction. Um, Let's see. Oh, you want me to show my real, my my actual setup? Um, So I think uh, one of my buddies is going to come over this Friday. Uh, You might, you guys might know him, but he'll probably have a podcast. Yeah, I'll show my I'll show my office setup at some point. I just uh, I don't really have a great way of showing it right now. My like my webcam is like attached to my monitor kind of. So yeah, so when I when I started journaling, Mike Mike asks, uh, <laughs> "Craig's just a paladin." I don't know. <laughs> Did you do effective journals? Record your emotion and lesson learned. Yeah, so honestly. There's two, there's two different types of journals that I used to keep. So the, the journal that I kept for my technicals, like the data behind my system was one, but recording your emotions and like how you're reacting to certain uh, situations, right? If you take a loss, if you have a win, you should be recording your emotions as well as, um, as well as recording your trade statistics. Like you should be doing both uh, because you be, you have to just become aware of your emotions and how you're reacting. Right. If you haven't already, smash that like button. <clears throat> what else we got here? Um, yeah, effective journaling is so powerful. You gotta. To me, I always I found the biggest benefit was just recording my emotions and like tracking my behaviors. Um, because I, if you if if you're like 
for me, I was a bad over trader. Like I, I love to, I love to revenge trade. So I just had to figure out like what was causing me to revenge trade. And most of the time it was just me becoming emotional and not accepting the loss. Like it was my ego that was getting in the way of me accepting the outcome of the market, you know, because once you take that loss, if you're over trading and you take the loss, right. And you enter another position, it's like, you're trying to prove to yourself that you you're a good analyst right but you can't control the market so if you start over trading revenge trading right that's an emotion that you have to record like <laughs> there's a deep root there's a deep root cause of you over trading and it's not just uh greed like it could be a multitude of things uh what do i use to journal i, I used edge wonk like exclusively for a long time um i'm trying to try out tradezilla because they're adding some features and the I mean, Edgewonk is great, but it can be overwhelming if you have too many things to tag in your trades because they have so many custom comments that you could add. <clears throat> um, let's take a look at Bitcoin real quick, guys. I think it's rallying a bit um, today, but it's it's been stuck in a range, honestly. So what have we got here? I mean, we kind of have this range that we're working in right now. And this has just been sideways. So, like, do you even really want to trade this? I mean, if we don't penetrate this wick and these lows down here, we can probably press higher. Right now, it just looks hella sloppy. Uh, I mean, based on the weekly, we could dig into this level more, which I think is most likely going to happen if the dollar pushes higher. Um, just because this is such a huge inefficiency. And usually when it, we have a, kind of a deep retracement like this, like it's usually not done uh, until we see like a nice um, bullish candle. And we'll have a swing fa failure pattern here. All right, so watch this level in here. Um, we have this order block. And then I believe on the monthly, yeah, we st see we still have not gotten up into here. So right now we're actually trading inside of a monthly buy side imbalance so if it, if it is going to rally it should rally from here like it should not uh break below that fair value gap because if it does then we're possibly going to go lower Let's see if we have any more questions in here pax g btc is good for btc oh, okay the dollar it's like a dollar euro relationship awesome taylor i gotta i gotta check that out man uh currently using notion yeah so notion is is good like you, there's a lot of things that you could customize in notion but um i find it kind of burdensome like there's just so much you can customize with it but i know it could be a good journal i just haven't found uh any need for it just because i can use edge wonk or something like that so again, guys, if you if you're new to my channel and you're you like the content that I drop, maybe you've seen some of the other videos. Um, you know, you're gonna pay for a challenge anyway. Like I'm uh, I'm affiliated with the Funded Trader, so you know, use the QR code. It supports the, supports me. It supports the channel, and uh, you go, you'll get five percent off on any order that you use uh, this code. So in the next couple of weeks, I'm going to have a big announcement for you guys uh, as far as private mentorship. Uh, I know some people have been asking. Again, I'm still doing stuff for free. Uh, I'm going to have a case study out this Saturday for the Trader Roundup. I've got two more guests coming on for Funded Fridays this Friday. And I'm hopefully going to kick up the amount of volume I'm doing on some of these live streams. Like I think I'm going to do some series on... You know, where where would I start if I had to restart, you know, studying ICT's concept content and, you know, maybe just some more basic, basic things because I know how hard it is to, like, go through his content. Like, once you go on his YouTube page, you're, like, lost uh, just because there's so much stuff there. So if you guys don't really have anything else here, I'm going to kind of wrap this up. So I did, I, you know, I'm, I've passed two of the two out of the three phase one challenges at the funded engineer. Um, the last one 
let's let's take a look at the last one. I think the last one I started it April 16th. So it's been over a month already and I'm only up 4%. So that's that's kind of that's kind of the environment that the dollar was in. I mean, all of April, right? Like I started April fifteenth, and look what happened to this shit. I started literally the, at the worst time, April fifteenth, and it's boom sideways, right? So these last couple of days, right now I'm up four percent. If it goes into another consolidated market here, right, it's going to take me longer to pass that. But, I mean, we've had a nice expansion already. I think it's going to continue higher this week. Uh, the three-day chart. I think it's going to go to one of fours, but that's just my opinion. There's a lot of news on the docket this week, so we'll have to just be careful. All right, guys. If you guys don't have anything else, I'm going to hop off. Um you know, tune in Friday. I'll, I'll be on with two more guests. I'll send out a little promo on who they are. Uh, and uh, it'll be a good time. So with that being said, hope you guys have a great night. I'm going to do a little outro here. All right, guys. Take care.